Yes. OK, cool. So uh, today we want to uh, to have a conversation on why partner with Cradle Point. And um, well, to, to just jump in as well is why uh, partner with Cradle Point. Cradle Point is a 100% channel driven go to market model. So uh, like Kuhn, we have salespeople uh, working with and uh, talking to customers, but always with and uh, through our partners. So uh, all of our uh, revenues are done via channel in a two tier model being distribution, uh, partner and then end user. So that's one of the things I just wanted to mention up front. So and now I hope it moves. Yeah, there we go. So, Cradle Point, uh, it's new to uh, the region, uh, but it's not new as a company. It started out actually in 2006 uh, as a consumer uh, oriented uh, company, but since 2011, we're focusing on business to business solutions. And you see in the timeline the ramping up of uh, the number of employees, the number of introductions. Uh, in 2016, our NetCloud platform was born, and I'll get into that in a, in a minute. You also see the number of employees growing, and also uh, on the, the bulb on the line, the 600K and the 1.1 million, those are subscriptions that we are managing in our NetCloud management platform. Um, as you also see, is that um, in 2020, Ericsson bought Cradle Point. Why did Ericsson buy Cradle Point? Ericsson is carrier focused, so uh, they have a direct business model, but they have the cellular infrastructure. They have uh, coverage in 180 countries around the world. They work with the biggest uh, carriers and their uh, uh, the usage from 2G to 5G. You can see how many there are there, but there's no not a model within the Ericsson uh, setup to cover enterprises, enterprise customers. And there's where CradlePoint comes in, also in a technology uh, standpoint, because we are end user or end point uh, vendor. Uh, and of course, like I said, Ericsson is much more into the core networks of carriers. And the, those two combined uh, have a, uh, a total solution from the core to the edge. So who is CradlePoint? CradlePoint? delivers solutions 4G and 5G based on cellular technology, which is subscription based, cloud managed and connect people, places and things everywhere. And by uh, well, it says uh, in, in the bottom, of course, uniquely positioned to lead the wireless WAN market. So what is wireless WAN? You can use it everywhere, deploy quickly, adapt on demand and support customers uh, and and also, let's say MSP or service led models. What is it in uh, in basis? It is a network that relies on cellular connectivity. So that's the definition. It's uh, not wired in the basis, but it's cellular. That being said, all other links might be used, but cellular is then still uh, a very primary part of the solution. So just to give an idea of where you can find Cradle Point and where are we active, we divide our solutions into three swim lanes. That's how we call them, branch, mobile, and IoT. Branch is everything that is permanently or temporarily fixed location, being retail, being pop-up stores, uh, home offices, branches, everything. You can look at it, uh, for instance, for IKEA. Uh, they use us for continuity solutions connected to their uh, uh, wired network. Uh, we have for another uh, example in that area, that's Pandora, uh, that use us as a uh, uh, day one connectivity platform. So they don't have to wait for cablers or ISPs to come in and deliver the cables. They can just go ahead, open the stores, and then later on they can add the, the, the wired solution to the cradle point. The second swim lane is mobile. And so that's not in the mobile phones, of course, but in mobile solutions like emergency services, where we in the US are the market leader within police force, uh, fire departments and ambulance services, but also in transport, uh, could be trains, could be uh, buses, could be lorries, all those kinds of things. 
and in construction or logistics uh, manufacturing, for instance, also. Uh, we also deliver uh, for a crop harvester manufacturer the connectivity to their crop harvesters, which they sell worldwide, and they use it for connectivity purposes, of course, but also for predictive maintenance uh, indications. And then the final uh, swim lane is IoT. And uh, there we do not sell the sensors uh, or the dongles or those kinds of solutions. We, we deliver the connectivity. For instance, uh, one of the examples is uh, Amazon lockers. There are over 40,000 locker installations worldwide. All of them have a cradle point within them. And uh, it all, uh, let's say it um, by introducing this as a solution, you can have less people involved because you can just walk up to the uh, locker, uh, have your barcode scanned, a door will open and you could take your package out. Same as uh, with returns, you can walk up, you scan your barcode, a door opens, you can put your package in, you uh, close it and it is returned. Second uh, example there is video and video uh, censoring. Uh, one of the uh, partners we are also working with has a solution for real-time uh, sports and analytics platform where they have active cameras connected to uh, cradle points, which are used on, let's say, soccer fields, baseball fields, stuff like that, and uh, gives uh, real-time information to analyze uh, and improve, uh, let's say, uh, uh, players physically, game situations, etc. And the last example on the right is digital signage. Uh, what you see there is Times Square. But also one of the examples that we have there is uh, with the Bank of America, which uh, could be a strange one um, when you first hear of it. But due to uh, big audits that they had internally in all of their branch offices, uh, they uh, found out that they had a, a breach of their own um, uh, eth uh, ethics and compliance rules because of the fact that external uh, data was flowing over their core network where also their client and financial data was. So because of that audit, they had to split out the uh, digital signage uh, network and build it on a cradle point so that they have a separate air gap network in all of those branches. Where we are currently, uh, because of course, uh, for those who have been uh, around uh, a few years, um, <clears throat> we've seen, uh, let's say, all of these steps moving from mainframe to server to virtual machines to cloud. But where we currently are is that um, actually customers are looking into extending their networks into the, <clears throat> excuse me, into the edges of their networks. And um, one of the examples that we hear, of course, also is that the, the amount of data being uh, created at the edge will outgrow the data center uh, pace by many factors. And that's also because of the fact that it's uh, available to uh, companies and to users of companies. And that leads into the fact that we see a, an, enormous, uh, sorry, an enormous growth in a number of endpoints and edge computing. But then the, the, the question, of course, becomes how do you connect that? How do you make sure that you have the right data flowing back from the edge to the core. It would be uh, pretty useless if you have a self-driving car, which is communicating constantly with, uh, with the head office, with the data center, uh, and due to, to latency has delays on uh, its own commands how to drive. I mean, that has to take place on the edge. If you look at the market opportunity, it's a massive growth market. Um, especially now that 5G is opening up, and that's a whole separate uh, presentation actually, so we won't go to that in depth. But if there are questions and you're interested to, to learn about that, please reach out to, uh, to Tech Data or us. But we see uh, a big growth market ahead of us, already with 4G LTE, but also with 5G. And more and more questions could become, why should you cable uh, uh, into, let's say, a solution when the wireless or cellular options bring you much more flexibility, total cost of ownership, improvements, and uh, future-proof solutions. As said, Credit Point has been around for quite some years, and uh, this is some of the proof points that we just wanted to share. 
but of course, we also do not do this in splendid isolation. We work closely together with industry partnerships uh, through uh, our Technical Alliance program. We recently also announced our cooperation uh, with uh, Juniper, for instance. Um, but uh, we, we work well with actually all brands like Cisco, like uh, Aruba, like Ruckers, like Extreme, um, because we are a complementary solution to their core networks. And a number of our solutions we have sold together with, uh, for instance, uh, Aruba. In the Netherlands, we have a, uh, a retail chain with 220 sites where we uh, work together with Aruba and won a deal uh, actually competing together against uh, Fortinet. In that solution, we are the, uh, the continuity solution to the retail stores because as we see, uh, uh, let's say the economy is moving forward, point of sale equipment cannot be down. It, it's devastating for these types of, uh, of customers. Um, and of course, we, we work also together with, with partners to deliver and uh, deploy new technologies like 5G. Um, and this gives you a, a nice overview of some of the bigger brands that we use uh, uh, are using, but also who are we working with as customers and partners. So once again, we deliver 4G LTE and 5G technology that connects people, places and things everywhere cloud managed and subscription based. What does that mean? When you buy or resell Cradlepoint, you resell a service plan which consists of NetCloud Manager, our management platform, edge compute possibilities, NetCloud OS, the purpose-built hardware for branch IoT or mobile, limited lifetime warranty and 24 by seven support. The limited lifetime warranty, uh, that's the fact that you can uh, resell or put us to use with one, three or five years of subscription. And as long as you have an active subscription, you have warranty. And after the initial uh, runtime of a license, you can renew and also extend the warranty there. So we have two uh, flavors of the software layer that's essential and advanced. And especially uh, when people are looking into uh, detailed reports on cellular usage, stability, uh, failover from wired to wireless, all that kind of uh, um, information, uh, or out of band management, which I will touch in a few minutes, then advanced is uh, necessary to, to use. But it, um, coming from the cellular side of networking, uh, we can, uh, uh, or we can generate, sorry, I was looking for the word. We can generate reports with much detail of uh, the environment, which you can use towards customers to, for instance, uh, have a basis for, uh, uh, let's say, uh, billing the customer. Then what does the cloud management mean? Um, actually, uh, having a cloud management system uh, means a couple of things, not only, let's say, in the technology side of it, but also in business models. With this uh, cloud management layer, you can uh, have a resale model to your customers, where you resell this total solution, including the management platform to the customer, and they manage their own environment. You can sell it to them, so that's on their balance sheet, but do the management for them or on behalf of them. Or you can also choose to be a managed service provider to your customer where you are as a company, the owner of uh, the licenses and the entitlement, and you run a managed service to your customer uh, and based, like I said just before, on the analysis and the information that we can uh, supply in reports out of this platform, do the billing to your customers. Why is this important? Um, especially when you work with customers that have multiple locations, you want to have central control, uh, but also you want to have, uh, because uh, if you look at, let's say, uh, IT departments of customers, when there's a, a large number of, of locations active, it's very hard to, uh, to manage them all locally because uh, IT resources will not be present or will be uh, uh, well, infrequently present. With our solutions, as soon as a customer is uh, has its environment or the partner in our cloud management platform, uh, before the machines leave our factory, it's already visible in that management platform. 
So when it comes to the customer, the, the hardware comes to the customer and it's connected via uh, uh, power and SIM, it will call home and it will install itself in the configuration that was agreed upon in that environment. So that's the zero touch deployment part of it. Of course, there's always, always somebody handling the hardware to put it into the power and stuff like that, but uh, the provisioning and the configuration can be done centrally. And that can be done on a device and a group level. Our typical customers manage between five to 10 uh, um, subscriptions and solutions by that. Uh, until the biggest one that we have out of the US that's centrally managing 154,000 of them centrally. Of course, it's an enterprise class uh, uh, solution. So secure remote monitoring and updates uh, and custom alerts can be put in place. And custom alerts can also be, let's uh, say, uh, the capacity usage of a SIM contract. Um, it could be um, setting alerts on a usage uh, of typical uh, sites or applications that you want to manage or monitor. And then um, out of my management and API extensibility. Um, the API extensibility leads to the fact that we can import and export data out of the platform into other management platforms. This is how we're working together with, uh, for instance, uh, Juniper, but also some of the others you saw. And out of band management is a part where we see much interest uh, nowadays uh, because of the fact that more and more uh, enterprise customers start to realize that having two lines, hard lines, into your uh, company doesn't necessarily give you a continuity solution because of the fact that in most cases, these lines go through the same gutter on the last mile. So uh, uh, in, in the example of our um, uh, reference case in the Netherlands, from the 220 sites in a year's time, four went down temporarily because of uh, construction uh, work and, and things like that. Uh, so um, especially, like I said, the point of sale oriented companies, right? Retailers uh, like restaurants, they're looking into the uh, continuity solution with a cellular background because we can then uh, have a separate path to, uh, let's say, the point of sale material. But we can also do out of band management, which means that through our solution, you can have insight on what's happening on the location without having to go there right away. You can first assess and then send somebody out well prepared. Just an overview on uh, our solutions. Um, and as I said, um, it's branch, mobile and IoT. And it's um, purpose built, uh, like I said before, it's, uh, it could be ruggedized if the uh, surroundings need to be. It could be that it's uh, adapters that we connect to any brand of uh, of networking vendor, to uh, like the, the retail uh, uh, example, or it could be that we have all-in-ones that we have for um, uh, the smaller branch offices. Okay, and then how do you partner with Cradle Point? We have three streams in our uh, uh, in our program, reseller of our service provider and technology alliance partner. Well, uh, it, it's uh, understandably, of course, that uh, the reseller uh, resells the Cradle Point solutions as well as additional services, uh, which you can uh, develop on our platform, of course. And you could also then, of course, have a hybrid model there because a service provider could be cloud-based, uh, of course, but it, we see also some partners now that have both in their own, uh, in, uh, both at the same time in their own company. So it, it doesn't, the one doesn't exclude the other one. And the third one is our technology alliance program, which I just mentioned. And this is, um, for instance, also for partners, we have some software ecosystem partners that run their software in uh, Docker uh, types, uh, Docker, sorry, Docker instances on our cradle points. And these types of partners we are also working with to enhance our solutions into the future. The partner program is quite simple. It's registered uh, because we work with a, uh, a closed uh, net, uh, network of partners. You need to be registered with CradlePoint to be able to transact. Um, then Signature, Premier and Elite. And our um, discounts are based on your, uh, sing uh, on your partner level. But we also work with 
uh, special pricing agreements for um, for uh, bigger projects. And it's also the case that all levels can do deal registration with us. And um, of course, uh, moving up in the line, uh, also we, um, we want to work with you as partners to enlarge your, your knowledge and your experience uh, through uh, certification trainings and certification exams, which are all, by the way, online. So they're web-based and they're free of charge. And I must say that I've myself done the sales associate and network associate. It took me uh, 45 minutes for the sales associate and one hour and 15 minutes for the network associate. So it's it's crisp. It's uh, clear trainings. It's based on use cases like the, the three swim lanes that we mentioned. And it's uh, also, I think, very uh, interesting to, to learn from where this market is moving towards. So from the start, uh, from the onboarding, uh, we will uh, take you uh, by the hand also uh, to, to learn a bit about our partner portal, uh, then the sales for sale, uh, enablement, technical enablement uh, trainings. And then, of course, like I said before, we work with and through our partners towards customers. So on customer projects, you can uh, you can reach out to us. And what we also see, by the way, is that uh, the live demos uh, and also the proof concepts are particularly interesting because we have a hit rate of 93% of successful wins uh, when proof of concepts are uh, put in place. So if you look in what's, uh, let's say, the probability uh, profitability for partners, of course, a resell, but uh, our environment also gives you the, uh, the possibility to, to do support services. Um, do registration, like we mentioned, and of course you can, uh, let's say, build a model to the highest end as, a, as an MSP to have recurring business models based on our subscription uh, reselling model and develop your own consulting uh, site survey uh, type of services. So to enlarge the margins you can make on credit point solutions. So, my credit point. Uh, like we said, the margins, the enrichments of the service, continuity improvement, uh, and of course you can uh, you can read a lot of things here. The simple to sell also is one of the things because of course technology can be uh, can, can be complex, but working with with our partners and using our um, our use cases and our customer cases. We do think that we can pretty quickly come into, let's say, situations where we can prove where we add value, where we are com complementary to current install bases of other vendors like the, the Cisco's, the Fortinet's and the Junipers. But also um, when customers have, especially when they have all three of our uh, swim lanes in their own environment, uh, let's say they have a head office, they have uh, uh, logistical lo locations and they have trucks moving equipment or uh, 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 um, let's say goods to sell those three if they are combined within one customer environment there's nobody but credit point that can combine that into one single solution centrally managed so with credit point we supply you a state of art of technology and training like I said, it's also CPU is part of the uh, actually of the uh, uh, the service plans that we uh, that we sell. So it's also uh, addressable or accessible for customers. But as you uh, as you uh, register as a partner, it's also open to you to use and learn and and uh, work from that. Of course, we want to be in touch with our partners as much as we can for surveys, for feedback, for feature requests, uh, which is also possible through our Cascade platform, which is our uh, partner portal. We just had our global partner summit uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we have advisory councils like you would expect from, from any vendor like this. And um, we are building out our reach. Uh, if you look at uh, the EMEA, EMEA region in 2020, there were like 12 to 16 people. Now there are over 100 uh, colleagues in the EMEA region active. So are there any questions? Jessica, did you perhaps get any questions? Uh, not in 
the chat. Okay. Is there anyone else who wants to speak up or <laughs> say something? Men någon som vill ta det på svenska så går det också bra såklart. Några funderingar. Ni kan tänka mig att flera av er jobbar med nätverk idag som sagt och är lite nyfikna på vad CredPoint är. Um, och som sagt, som han presenterar så finns ju väldigt mycket bra fördelar just att använda CredPoint till. Mycket accesspunkter och, och uh, mobila ställen och pop-up stores och allt möjligt. Det finns ganska stor bredd av utbud där ute som framförallt funkar just med 5G och så vidare. Ni kan det här säkert bättre än vad jag kan. Så att... Uh, ett komplement som leverantör skulle jag definitivt säga till eh, mycket business här ute. No question what I can see, Eric. Okej, okay. then I would like to thank everyone for your time and your attention. And um, uh, let's, let's get in contact, let's, let's have discussions on how we can uh, add to your business, be complementary to your current business and perhaps look into new business uh into the uh, the cellular uh, segment of uh, of the IT market. Thank you very much. Thank you Eric. Thank uh, you. Tack så jättemycket för alla. Uh, jag kan bara nämna att det kan hända att någon av er får ett telefonsamtal under veckan. Um, och bara liksom följer upp lite inte för att ligga på er så men bara följer upp om ni har några frågor eller funderingar. Ibland dyker det upp inte här och nu utan senare. Så att har ni några funderingar, kontakta oss eller ta det om ni blir uppringd senare i veckan. Tusen tack för idag. Vi ses så hörs snart igen. Hej då. Hej hej. Tack hej då.